What's up, everyone? Sorry for the three minute delay. I'm here with Jag, and he is a performing arts physical therapist. We connected, what was it like, two months ago? Almost. Yeah, I think it was two months ago, the uh, dance PT program. Yeah, yeah, talking about that. Yeah. And then and then fast forward, was it a week or two ago? Uh Jag posted a video of him dancing and he's like, God, uh, he's good. Jag's good. And so of course I shared I'm like, oh my god, I like a Jag. So I just have natural like love for Jag just from that just from a dance video. I was like, oh my god, I'm awesome. Thank you. Thank I'm glad you. it resonated with you. Oh, it really did. It really did. Yeah. So tell us about you, your practice and stuff so people can just be like, who's who's Jag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so my name's Jag and uh, I work in London, so in London, United Kingdom, and I'm a physio. I work as part of R&D Physio and we're a clinic based here in London. We've been running for around five years now and me, me mainly, I, I specialize in dance physio and also chronic pain. Patients. So awesome. It's so good to have you. Yeah. You're from London. I had no idea. Like literally, I think oh. I feel like my heart has dropped of like excitement. I'm so happy. Oh. Wait, what's the time difference? What is our time difference right now? So right now it is 12 p.m. Oh my God, I had no idea. Uh, okay, remind me and we will definitely do a much earlier time because that's, I had no, I could have done earlier today. I just have that set time. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's My fine. sleep plan at the moment is not great, so I'm going to bed at 1 p.m. at 1 a.m. anyway, so oh, it's not too like good. Oh, did you like Yeah. <laughs> I definitely possible for that. I had no idea. I'm so I'm so like self evolved. I'm like ah, oh, everybody's like close to East Coast time. Yep. <laughs> well, Jack. Oh my God, it's so good to have you on here. Jack did a post recently that got me to reach out to him, and it was about being vulnerable to patients and how that makes a difference. Mm. Would you mind sharing what even started that need where you th felt like it was a need? Could you tell a little bit about that journey? Yeah, sure. So I think it kind of started maybe three, four years ago. I started, I went to a public speaking event. So at this time, I wanted to kind of improve my public speaking abilities. And I think during that one of those uh, sessions, I went to a certain public speaking event where they spoke about vulnerability. And the the director, the course director, he introduced me to Brené Brown. So I don't know if you've heard of Brené Brown, but she's got a TED talk and you guys yeah. not heard so of her right now. just watch it on that yeah. <laughs> and you're welcome <laughs> yeah so she's, got, <laughs> so she's got an amazing ted talk i think it's got millions of views now and since that literally since that um, video i think we started practicing and we just be vulnerable to talking about things that almost made us uncomfortable made us really step out of comfort zone and what I noticed was just personally, in my own experience, I noticed how me sharing my own experiences got me to relate to other people on that course. And actually other people reached out to me saying they've had similar stories, similar experiences. So it's really interesting to see how in our heads, we have this perception of you know how certain things should be, how we should portray ourselves. But actually, once you start speaking about your insecurities, your weaknesses per se, you really start to resonate with other people and you really get closer to them. So that's how it started initially. And then working as a physio, I started to notice actually me talking to patients and asking them how they're actually feeling. Not just, I guess, you know, on a day to day basis, not just about how they've done with their pain or like their rehab program, but actually how they're doing in general life. They started to open up to me. I've noticed our relationship changed. They started to get closer to me. They started being more open to what I was talking about, more open to listening to me. So just through that, for me, vulnerability was able to show me how like it really forms a strong relationship, even with your clients, with yourself, with just everyone in general. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, sure. I couldn't agree yeah. more. I'm, I'm completely on the same page with you. When in physical mm -hmm. therapy school, I was definitely given the message over and over again, don't be open, shh, 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 you know, to, you know, yeah. keep that wall up. And as soon as I let that guard down, I was getting, patients were getting better. Patients were getting yeah. better. And when they're yeah. holding back and not being open with me about stuff, they don't get better. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's really, yeah. and what I mean by that is they don't do their homework. 
you know, or they're not being honest with me. I, I had, I had one dancer patient. It sucked. Oh, it sucks so hard. Uh, cause, cause you want, you know, like you want them to get better. And I gave this, this dancer two exercises to do uh, just two. Just two. <laughs> um, and, that's, that's um, a you want initially. and I found out from, because I was collaborating, of course, everything was signed away for me to be able to talk with the director of the, the dance program and talk about her situation. And I was talking with the director of the program and about, about this dancer. And I said, you know, hey, have you, you know, like heard anything, you know, that, and she said, and, and I, I, I to told her that, my dan the dancer had said, I haven't been doing the exercises. Meanwhile, she went to the director and, uh, oh no, she said she hadn't been doing the exercises. She went to the director and she said she was doing her exercises. And I said, I don't know what to believe on this, but we clearly are getting different stories on what's going on. And um, with and, and fortunately, from that communication with the directors, I learned that she was had already gone to another physical therapist because she, and and because she oh, didn't like them, and she was happier with the answer they said, which was go get another surgery hmm. <laughs> because she has ligament. <laughs> You know, oh, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> she didn't yeah. trust me. She wasn't telling me the truth. Like all that, you know, mm. I was op as well open as I could be. But at the end of the day, if that trust isn't there, you you got nothing. You have mm, absolutely nothing. So I could. Uh, I mean, it sucked. It sucked. I was like, no. I'm like, mm. I'm fine if you if you need to go to someone else. But it just sucked the the route that this dancer chose to go. I was like, oh my god. Don't yeah. the record if any think, dancers or anybody works with dancers right now and doesn't know this on PT, you do not get surgery for ligamentous laxity. You don't. You don't do that. <laughs> you don't. Like, that's, that's not <laughs> cancer. So, like, no. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think like you raise a really important thing there is about the trust as well. Like, I think when you're vulnerable with someone, you want you you're doing it because you want to relate to them and you want to be able to trust them as well, in a sense. Mm -hmm. so I think it's really important there because I've had few clients myself who are dancers and they're very reluctant to be open about how they feel about the actual physio exercises because you know you give them two exercises but they want to do more they're so used to training rigorously training a lot and they don't want to do two exercises so they're not open with you and then it, it kind of creates that barrier where like you want to help them and you want to be able to reassure them and comfort them but they're also a bit like you know, they don't want to tell you because they're also scared of feeling you know of feeling like they're doing something wrong per se right they're used to being obedient saying yeah. yes sir exactly yeah got it thank you Smile. Yeah. but it really is that collaboration for sure oh my god a hundred percent yeah um what have you ever been questioned by other physical therapists about you know why are you being vulnerable have you ever dealt with that hundred percent i think Early on in my year, so I've only been a graduate for around three years now. So I think earlier on in my first year, I found myself having to be really professional and just really, in my eyes, you know, being that kind of mask, having that mask where I'm not really showing my emotions, not really telling them how I really feel. There was times where, you know, I would come out and I'd be more friendly with patients and they'd ask me, why are you being friendly? Why are you doing this? And... I think, I don't know if it's a stigma around kind of working in a hospital field, because that's where I was initially working. But, you know, it's the idea you have to be friend, you don't, you can't be too friendly and you have to be really professional. So definitely, I think earlier on, I had uh, a lot of my seniors kind of question, am I being too friendly? Am I coming across too polite um, or less polite per se? So I think earlier on, definitely, I think now going forward, my team that I'm working with are really great. And we've actually kind of, taken vulnerability to a new level where we've had team retreat days where we've literally had sessions where we've been vulnerable with each other and it's really changed our whole kind of working dynamic because we've gotten to know each other more on a deeper level we've able to see our fears and weaknesses but also it's allowed us to understand each other more so when it comes to actually taking feedback from our teammates it's allowed us to give feedback in a more what we call radical candor yeah which is basically we're more open to taking feedback knowing that you know the other person is there to help us 
Whereas before, when we didn't really understand the person, when we didn't know what their kind of fears and what they were insecure about, it was more harder to give them feedback because we weren't sure if they would take it personally or if they'd be scared about what we'd say. Whereas now we're more open to each other and it's kind of allowed us to really break through the team. So at the moment, I think our, yeah, at the moment, our team is open to vulnerability. Whereas I'd say before when I was working in a hospital, it wasn't something that was spoken about too much. It was only when you had one-on-one -on -one meetings where you'd speak about it. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, nice you know, oh yes, let me wear my collared shirt. There we go. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Mobilize, mobilize. Hello, goodbye. Like literally, yeah. Yeah, no. Dumb. Um, doesn't it I mean it's less fulfilling too. It really is. I mean, when mm, the yeah. rewards are so much higher when somebody gets out of their mm. room, is able to get back into their show, you know, and do a, a specific lift or whatever, you know, has really been holding them back. It's so cool to see them achieve that. And, and even more exactly, so yeah. that relationship. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Um, and I think when you're actually, hiding like your your true self when you actually have that mask on it really kind of rubs off as all well the way you like help people because when you're not being vulnerable it's almost like you're putting on a mask and people can kind of often sense that feeling and i think that's where the um, comes back to that kind of trust thing where like sometimes people when they don't when they feel you're being fake for say fake they might not trust you as much if that makes sense yeah Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we know it. We know when someone's not being fully themselves. And and I always look at it as an alarm just in a general in any relationship where if I'm opening up to someone and they're listening, fine, but I don't know anything. They're mm -hmm. not opening up to me on an equivalent level. That right there just shows like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. there's a separation here and we're not on the same page. And it makes me hold back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, um, and it's just, yeah. you know, cause I'm just like, I'm going to protect myself. Like, why would I, why would I give you that, you know, stuff about me, you know, to be like potentially judged or whatever when you're not being as. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. What was, um, what, what are some things that you've been open about with patients that has been a bit of uh, really hard for you at times to be honest about in conversation? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I think things that were tough for me I guess speaking about kind of family life like talking about times where I've had stuff going on in the family and just being open to patients you know today I've had a bad day and you know xyz something's happened in my family and telling them how that kind of how I felt in that moment and telling them you know actually today I might not be a great day I might not be as happy as always I might not be smiling and I think those kind of periods where the patient actually looks at you and actually it's interesting because they often they don't react the way you'd expect them to they always react better than you want them to kind of if that makes sense it's almost like they give you that reassurance that you want and then it's almost like they also open up so I think one example is telling a patient about my own experiences with an accident I had so a running accident and I injured my knee and I think opening up and telling them you know it kind of hurt it kind of was kind of hurt hurt me at that at that moment because it stopped me from reaching my goals at that time i was um dancing more and i was really moving forward with my goals but then you know with that injury i felt kind of like helpless it, it kind of felt annoying because at that time i felt like I was, at, I was at my top peak and then it happened and all of a sudden it's like oh my god i feel helpless i can't do anything and actually being open with those feelings to my kind of my client at the time and actually telling them you know feeling feelings of like being not good enough not being able to reach my full potential was interesting because my client then was able to relate to that and they were able to understand where I was coming from but it also helped her rehabilitation because then she was able to understand actually she was going through the same feelings mm. but that's okay and she was able to then kind of follow what I was telling her and understand that I was there for her like I was actually helping her yeah that's really that's powerful i love that yeah. for anybody who is listening right now and they are 
considering they're, they're afraid to be open with their patients. What would be yeah. the advice you would give to them in regards to stepping it up in that? Mm, I think, I, I think to begin with, you want to be able to be open with yourself. Like, are you able to kind of look in the mirror and actually be open with things that are going on wrong with yourself and being accepting of those things just in just with yourself like personally and i think if that's difficult maybe reach out to someone close to you because i think if you're trying to go from opening up to from to yourself or someone close to you and then opening up with a client it's going to be really hard that step is you're, you're literally opening up to someone you don't know so in that sense i think it's important to first to reach out to yourself and be open with yourself maybe start journaling, journaling around things that are troubling at the moment, journaling about any kind of insecurities or fears that you may have. Then from there, take it to someone close to you, someone you trust, someone who, you know, you look up to and just tell them how, they, how you're feeling, tell them something that you're scared to talk about, scared to be open about. And then from there, you can kind of slowly progress to clients. Because if you open up to a client straight away, it might be, feel a bit daunting and it might be feel a bit strange as well when you opened up and you've never done it before. And there's a client just looking at you like, what? So, yeah. It's so it's someone, you know. How uncomfortable you feel. Exactly. Precisely. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was so good to just for you to pop on and talk about this vulnerability. I just think it's so valuable and something that we just need to keep trying to do it takes us to the next level with rehabbing our patients fully if people want to find you online where can they find you yeah sure uh so i work for r d physio so you can search us on google you can find us on instagram at r.d.physio and you can also find my personal account at jagnoth.sva and i'm also called the conscious physio so i've got a page called the conscious physio on instagram and I've got my own website. It's dragonossva.com. I love it. And for spelling, for uh, if in case this becomes a podcast at some point, I have no idea if it will. It's spelled Jagunath, yeah. A-G-U-N-A-T-H. Thank you so Perfect. much for yeah. coming yeah. on at midnight your time. Oh, my God. Yeah. God <laughs> no bless. problem. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're the best. All right. Take care. Thank you. Take care.